Support for WCBU's On Deck comes from Jaguar Land Rover Peoria on Allen Road, offering personalized service to customers from their first visit to the store to when they drive their new Land Rover home. More at jaguarlandroverpeoria.com. This is WCBU Peoria Public Radio. Years after the pandemic, those suffering from long COVID are still waiting for an effective treatment or cure. That's just one of the things you'll want to hear about to start your day for Tuesday, April 30th. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, a Pekin nonprofit organization that assists unhoused individuals is preparing to move its downtown day shelter to a new location. WCBU's Joe Deacon reports. Darla Kuntz of the Pekin Outreach Initiative says they're in the process of remodeling an area at the Salvation Army Center on Derby Street to fit their needs. They had an open space where their child care used to be in a basement-like area. And so we felt like we were outgrowing where we were and it would be a good fit because we can use their resources to help some of the guests that we serve. Kuntz says they explored some other possibilities before reaching a three-year agreement with the Salvation Army. She says the organizations will operate in the same building but have separate entrances. You know, a lot of our guests stay there at night in their emergency shelter, so it kind of just seemed like a good fit. The outreach center offers showers, meals, and laundry facilities and serves up to 60 people each day. They also help people connect with agencies offering health, counseling, and job placement services. Kuntz says the new space will help them address their clients' needs better. It definitely has a nicer sized kitchen and a big open area, so there's not so many little sectioned rooms, so it's going to help us actually be able to kind of monitor the guests better. Kuntz says they're eyeing mid to late June for their move into the Salvation Army space. She says they intend to keep their current Elizabeth Street facility for a couple of years for other uses. For WCBU's On Deck, I'm Joe Deacon. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. A downtown Peoria project aimed at getting Peoria's unhoused families down to functional zero is getting a big boost. Phoenix Manor will receive $8.5 million in Healthy Housing, Healthy Communities funding. And it's been seven months since Illinois abolished the money bond system, and court officials say funding for mental health and drug treatment is desperately needed. Plus, a new report from researchers at the University of Illinois at Chicago says providing health coverage to undocumented immigrants would boost the state's economy. Find more of these stories and all the details at wcbu.org. When people first started getting COVID-19, there was little to be done. Four years later, there's tests, treatments, and a vaccine. But for people with long COVID, there's no diagnosis or cure. Melissa Ellen spoke to area doctors about what's being done to help people with the condition. Data shows that around one in six people in Illinois have experienced long COVID as of March. This according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But finding more granular data, say for central Illinois or even McLean County, is a little trickier. Central Illinois doctors point out that while symptoms of long COVID or post-COVID conditions are detailed, they're expansive, making the condition hard to diagnose. Here's Dr. Douglas Casper, who works in infectious diseases at the University of Illinois College of Medicine at Peoria. If you see these lists about symptoms with long COVID, there are many body systems, many examples, you know, almost 50 to 100 different things that can qualify. Casper also does clinical medicine through OSF St. Francis Medical Center in Peoria. He says this variability makes navigating the medical system for these people difficult. It is frustrating for the patient and the provider that there isn't a standard algorithm on how to apply it. Casper says it does seem like the system is learning, though. He's no longer getting consultation requests related to long COVID. I sense that those patients are either being referred away from infectious disease, meaning that the providers are finding them into these neurology clinics or rheumatology clinics or something else, or they're already figured out how to access the long COVID resource clinics in Illinois. 
Casper says he considers both successful outcomes because it means providers are finding a way to meet the patient's needs. Casper adds that the COVID-19 vaccine is still important as a preventative measure. Individuals that chose to be vaccinated have had proportionately lower outcomes of long COVID. When it comes to directly treating the condition in the central Illinois area, Casper says there aren't any long COVID research clinics, but there is one at the University of Illinois in Chicago that takes central Illinois referrals, and the University of Illinois College of Medicine Peoria is a partner. And while researchers try to determine the best plan of attack for diagnosis and treatment of long COVID, providers are still doing their best to treat patient needs. Dr. Neil Jepson is a health psychologist with Coral Health in Bloomington. He says he's seen several clients who likely have long COVID, but he can't determine exactly how many. He says it wouldn't even feel right to give an estimate because symptoms are so variable. What I've usually seen is fatigue, memory problems, anxiety, depression. That uh, would probably be the most common people get, but they can have chronic headaches, pain symptoms, but it's pretty individual. And for issues like anxiety and depression, Jepson says that it's essentially impossible to say the virus caused the conditions. He compared it to the issue of the chicken and the egg. Who knows which came first? And it's interesting because it can begin, you know, during the time of infection. It might be something that develops afterwards or maybe you even have a, just a period of time that where, the, where it begins to pop up. Since there's no cure-all for long COVID, Jepson focuses on treating the individual symptoms, whether those are related to COVID or not. It becomes a part of the picture for that person. Dr. Douglas Casper in Peoria points out that symptoms can be debilitating for people. They can cause them to miss work. They can cause them to not be able to participate in education or in, in family events. In July 2021, long COVID started being considered a disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act. That's according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm Melissa Allen. Now, before we let you go, Tuesday night is Trivia Night in Greater Peoria. You can find Bravo Trivia Night at Oliver's in the Heights to test your reality show knowledge. Find more general trivia at the Hungry Moose in Peoria or Think While You Drink Trivia at MD's Sports Bar and Grill on University Street. All three of these events start at 7 p.m. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck podcast on the NPR app, Apple, or Spotify.